think I used enough delay there. So for this month's Riff of the Month, I am giving you something which I love to do, which is to take something that is not all that difficult to play and make it sound like it's something super difficult. And you'll hear me say this probably a dozen times on Riffs of the Month and different things because it's what I like to do. Um, I Obviously, I play some parts that are uh, super complicated on some songs, but for the most part, I like to take things that aren't overly complex and just have that sound that there's more to it than there really is. And when you're playing in a live situation, like with my band Answer Infinity, um, that can be really important because you're trying to give a good show visually and uh, give a lot of energy. And if you're sitting here looking like a nerd playing the guitar, I am a nerd, I don't know why I said that. If you're looking like a me playing that guitar and uh, just really focused on the scales and everything, it's a little bit hard to entertain people if you're doing that, unless there are other music nerds like me who just care about how it sounds. Um, anyway, with all that said, let's take a look at the actual riff of the month here. This is, uh, I'm playing it in E minor and it's based on a simple pentatonic pattern and it's, uh, I'm skipping one string and creating a tapping loop. Now, the complicated thing about it, or the only really complicated thing about it, is that it's sextuplets instead of eighth notes or sixteenth notes. So if you're playing, you got the triplet, and then it's double the triplet for the sextuplet when you put it all together. The whole thing is hammered on, there's no picking at all, and I actually hammered the first note um, with my left hand, so... So it's that triplet there. It's a hammer from nothing to the note D on the D string, the 12th fret, then to the E, 14th fret on the same string, and then to the 17th fret on the same string. And then I skip a string going to the B string, and staying with the pentatonic, I hammer to the 12, then to the 15, then to the 17. So I have a... Still got the delay going when I dropped it back a little. And then I reverse back. So when I get to that high note, I just pull back to the 15, back to the 12. And now when I go back, it's not completely a reverse. It's not that note next, but it's rather that note with the uh, left hand next, the E, the 14th fret. Just because it's easier to play, you don't have to quick convert back over. Up to 17, back to 14 back to 12. So that whole first half of it, there's half of your pattern. Now I'm going to repeat the same exact thing, but I'm just going to move my right hand up to the 19th fret. Now when I've done that whole repeat where I've gone the first half of it, then repeat it again. I've got 23 notes. I need 24. I need the multiple of six to fit into a measure. So I pull off to the open D string. So after that second half of it, which gives me time to reset too, makes it a little easier to play. So we end up with and then it starts over again. So you can see it's very symmetrical. I'm not doing anything complicated with the left or the right hand. In fact, the left by itself, it's not something super fast or super difficult to play. And the right hand, none of what any of either hand is doing is particularly fast, but when you put it all together, it has that very complex sound, especially because it's sextuplets instead of sixteenths or eighths. Try not to get too much string noise in there, which can be a little bit challenging. But when you're playing it in the context of a song or live, you can get away with a little bit of that and it still sounds good. So that's your riff of the month. Again, nothing super complicated, but it sounds cool when you put it all together. And as always, guys, I hope you're making great music and getting something out of this. Leave any questions or comments, and I'll see you next time. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.